goals kind of mixed together. How you will approach it basically when you get to the test because it's all going to be put together. Okay, and that's really a challenge more than you know. Okay, um, so what I've done here is I've kind of typed out some stuff. So I wouldn't really read what they say directly, um, but I'm kind of going to go through it. The part that's in blue is the most important thing to do. First step, every single question is asking yourself, is there a common factor? You have to look for that first. Sometimes the answer is yes, sometimes the answer is no. If there's a common factor, take it out and you move to step two. If there's not a common factor, go directly to step two. How many terms there are then will determine which approach you take to factoring. If there are two terms, that's when you got to look. Is this a difference of squares? Is this a sum of cubes? Is it a difference of cubes? If it's three terms, that's when you're thinking FOIL, that reverse FOIL, trial and error, okay? Um, and if it's four terms, then you're thinking factoring by grouping, um, knowing that you have to look at the term to determine which kind of grouping. So the number of terms in the question determines your approach to the factoring then, okay? Um, so anytime you can factor, you factor. And then third question is, can I factor more? When you can factor more, it's always a difference of squares that you're looking for. Every time, it's a difference of squares if it factors further. And you have that hint that I gave you about the power of four. That kind of helps you really look extra for it then. So what I'm going to do is go through some questions using those steps. When you get to your test, eventually, this is what you would do, okay? So question one, is there a common factor? So if you don't know, I think I showed you how to do that GCD on your calculator. You could go there, but there is, it's three. So I take out a three. Three into 27 is nine, and three into 75 is 25. Do this as two steps, and I wrote that on several papers on that assessment that I give back to you, yeah. Um, that do not try to do a common factor and the two parentheses in one step because no one who tried did it right. Not a single person. Do it in two steps for sure. Common factor is one step, now go to step two. So I look at my terms. I have two. So do I have squares or do I have cubes? What's the consensus? Squares. So I factored as a difference of squares. Squares break up the same. 3x to the second times 3x to the second to get my 9x to the fourth. 25 is 5 times 5. 1 gets a plus, 1 gets a minus. And then can I factor further? I had that x to the fourth to look at. But this is not a difference of squares. So I'm done. Question two. Is there a common factor? Yes, I can take out a seven. And this is kind of not a trick question, but it kind of is a trick question. So then I look at my number of terms. I have three terms. And when I go to factor and break that up, x times x is x squared. My last term is positive, which means look to the middle. And my only option is seven times one to get my seven. Nowhere ever am I going to be able to get a 2 in the middle for that, okay? So that means that that trinomial does not factor. It does not mean that this question didn't factor because I did. I took out the 7. So don't put not possible there. You stop and you're done there. We took out a 7 and that's it. We can't do anything else at that point. So don't forget when we get to the test, that there are questions when all you can do is take out a common factor and do nothing else, okay? When is the test? Oh, I don't know. It's not next class or the next class, but the following class, whatever day that is. Okay. Okay, okay my next one. Um, is there a common factor? No. So I'm looking at then two terms, so I'm going to determine if they're squares or cubes. But be careful because remember, 64 is both x to the 6th is both a square and a cube, but y to the 27 is only a cube. So we're going to factor these as cubes. So I take the cube root of the first term, 
is 4x the second. Same sign. Cube root of that second term, y to the ninth. Divide the power by 3. And then 64, 4 times 4 times 4. And then remember our little saying. This is what you got to know. Square the first, change the sign, multiply them, square the last. So square the first, 16x to the fourth, change the sign, multiply them together, and then square the last. Now, I'm going to strongly advise, strongly advise, strongly advise that you do that quick check because some of you made mistakes that you could have corrected easily by doing your quick check on your assessments, okay? Because often, not often, I shouldn't say often, but sometimes somebody will put y to the 81st here because they take 9 times 9 when they square it. So if you did a quick check and took y to the 9 times y to the 81st, you'll know you're wrong. That's not going to be 27. Every time I touch it like that. So when I do my quick check, the first should give me the first, the last should give me the last. It's not a guarantee, but it certainly tells you that you're wrong, okay? Okay, next question. Do I have a common factor? It almost looks like I do, but look at everything. There's an X and an X and an X, but not an X. A Y and a Y, <coughs> not anywhere else, three and three. Nothing common to all four terms. So, what do I have? Four terms, which means grouping. How many squares do I have? I have one square, so I'm only going to use, um, I'm going to use two, two grouping. On the first two terms, my common factor is x, and I divide. x into x squared is x, plus x into xy is y. Whatever that sign is comes down. Common factor is 3, and I divide. Negative 3 into negative 3x is x, negative 3 into negative 3y, positive y. Remember that. If you have to bring down a negative here, that you're going to have a sign change here. That makes the parentheses match each other. So then my parentheses match. My common factor is the x plus y. And then what's left on the outside gives me my other parentheses. Okay, next question. Do I have a common factor? Nothing is common to 16 and 16 and 45. I can't take out an x either because there's no x in the last term. So I go to my parentheses. 16, I'm going to go with 4 and 4. It's my guess. I don't know yet. My silence is not going to work. Um, opposite signs. The last term is a minus, so one of each. And then 45, 15 times 3, 45 times 1, 5 times 9. So let's check that. Outer times outer is a negative 16, and inner times inner is positive 20. And there is my, now what did I do? 30, I'm ahead of myself here. Negative 36. And then there's my negative 16. I had done that in my head already. So negative 36, positive 20, so I match the middle. Big hint, I've got that x to the fourth power, so there's a chance that I could factor again. That's my third question I'm asking, and yes, I can. This is a difference of squares. So whenever you're going to factor again, it's going to be a difference of squares. So that's going to go to... 2x times 2x, 3 times 3, a plus and a minus. And then I'm done.